anyway let me zoom out of my face i didn't uh, appreciate that too much It's a little uneven, so that's kind of bothering me, but, you know, that's something I can fix post, you know? So, if I go back far enough and have it focus on my eyes, I can fix it. I can fix it, right? 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 I don't know. It's kind of bothering me. Anyway, what's up, Jones Bones? It is your girl, United Lee Random. And today, I am going to be talking about airports. Over the last month, I've been to like five different airports. I'm not even going to lie. And um, each of them came with their own little experience. I'm talking what I believe to be homophobia. What I believe to be uh, COVID symptoms. And, um, also, what else? What else? What else? Honestly, that's about it. I mean, people, like, it, it's, it's a story time, right? I'm just gonna tell you about all of the airports that I have kind of talked, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? But, like, let me tell you about my travels, okay? Right after this intro. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. And we are back. Hello, darlings. Thank you for sticking with me after that train crash of an intro. But uh, I really wanted to talk to you guys about my travels because I thought that it was like really interesting. Interesting. I thought that it was very interesting. So my first part of my travels was from Atlanta to, I believe, San Francisco. Now, this is the flight that I paid for myself. If you guys haven't seen the video, like, I don't know. I posted a video where I was like, everything's not necessarily going to plan. I don't remember the names of my videos, okay? If I remember, maybe I'll pop it up as like something over here, a card. But, um, yeah, I paid for my ticket and I was supposed to be getting there like really early in the afternoon. And then I was going to be at that airport for about 13 hours before I could go to my next stop. Okay. When I got to the airport at 3 o'clock that morning, I did not realize that my flight had been delayed. Um, the building, like the door that I went in, it was like a lot of people standing around. And there was no one in the front desk, but there were machines all around. So you could check yourself in by yourself. So I was going to check myself in and I was just having issues with the machine. I guess because they had switched up like the times for the flights. I don't know. You know, you can only check in two hours before your flight. But my flight got delayed by three hours. So I couldn't check in until I think about six o'clock. And I was there at like three o'clock in the morning. So there were some issues going on with that. And so I kind of just gave up and I was like, okay, I'll just go and talk to someone at the main desk. So I waited a while, waited a while, waited until about 45 minutes. So it was about four o'clock at this time. And someone like they finally started having people line up and stuff like that. My flight was supposed to be at five. So I was stressed AF, but everything works out for me. Like I didn't start saying that mantra until a little bit later, but like, honestly, everything always works out for me. Um, I was super stressed and I finally, it's my turn. I go to the front and I'm like, Hey, the machine wouldn't work. It told me to go to the front like desk. Like, I have this flight, and, like, you know, it's leaving soon. Like, I'm a little stressed. Like, I'm very open, very honest. The lady kind of gave me, like, bad vibes. It was, like, when I was standing in line, I was kind of like, oh, okay, so this is the lady I was going to go to. And I could kind of see her, like, eyeing me, and it was kind of like she didn't want to take me. And I just kind of chalked that up to it being early in the morning and, like, you know, just getting to work. But there were some bad vibes there, and I, I didn't even process this until later. Sometimes things will hit me like that. Like, sometimes, like, situations will happen. Like, the other day, like, while I'm overseas, someone tried to grope me, 
and I didn't even process it as happening but I was with someone else who was watching it and was like oh no you need to go stand over here because they're trying to grope you and stuff like that um certain things just kind of go over my head it's not often but I, you know if I think back at it I'll, I'll you know catch up to it I'm like oh yeah she was saying someone was trying to grope me and right when she said that I felt something touch my butt and I was like oh that's what was touching my butt because we were in a crowded area um so yeah anywhere I go still getting sexually harassed <laughs> But anyway, the lady kind of didn't want to deal with me, and it was just like, okay. She was like, well, you should have checked in at the computer. And I was like, yes, I know. I should have checked in the computer, at the computer. However, the computer told me to go to you guys. She was like, oh, what's the code? I was like, I don't know what you want from me. I have my passport, and, like, this is, like, what's going on, right? I'm just so confused because the computer sent me to you. I'm stressing out my flights near right the lady then like takes my passport after like huffing because like she was giving me a hard time about going to the computer and I'm like hey I told you from like the beginning the computer told me to come to you guys like I like I can I can read like I'm, I'm not giving her attitude but I'm just repeating myself like the computer she's like you should have went to the computer and I'm like the computer I did go to the computer the computer told me to go to you and it's just going back and forth so finally she kind of take my passport and she's like <sighs> okay and then she like scans my passport and she's like okay put your bag up on the thing and so I put my bag up on the thing and like she kind of like has her hand on it and it's like one pound overweight okay now here's the thing this is the airport that i paid for 10 extra pounds i don't remember how much i paid i want to say about 50 dollars for 10 extra pounds because it was an airport that only let you take 40 pounds worth of stuff and i know that i had i wanted to bring 50 pounds because i had 50 pounds at every other airport that i was going to go to so i wasn't gonna cut myself down 10 pounds like i'm going overseas to live for a year or more i need clothes so i was like no i'll pay that extra 50 dollars if i find out the price for it for real i will put it up on the screen but i don't remember precisely and so i paid that and it should have been reflected on my account if she actually looked at my thing she was like um your bag is 11 pounds overweight you need to go over there and sort that out and i was like Mm, it shouldn't be 11 pounds overweight because I paid the money to like be overweight you know what I mean like so that's that should be strange you know and the thing is for me she is looking at my account so she should know that I paid extra money for an overweight bag if she's checking my bag you know what I mean so I'm telling her and like she just she just rolls her eyes and turns to the side like she just rolls her eyes and turns to the side and she starts talking to someone else like yeah da, da, da. and I'm just like no I pay I paid over so that I can bring a bag that is over so I'm not I'm not 11 pounds overweight I guess I'm one pound overweight and she was like, well, you just need to go over there. And, like, she just kind of shut me off. It was just very, like, it was like she had a black cloud over her. I don't know what demons were eating her. And, like, I didn't process it till later that I was wearing, like, pride rainbow. Like, I was, like, super gay that day. Um, and I really do think that it, it was homophobia, honestly. I really do think that it was homophobia because past that point i went to the side and i was like i've packed my bag multiple times it was right at that 50 pound mark i checked it before i left home i was like i don't understand why this bag is overweight so i went through and i took out all of my deodorants right i took out i only had like three deodorants it wasn't a lot of deodorants but i took out three deodorants and i was like i guess this is gonna work now and i went back in line i had to wait another freaking 30 minutes like I y'all 
at that point I did not know that my flight had been postponed. So I was like, oh my gosh, my flight is going to close. It happened after I had got back in line. So like I said, everything always works out for me. But like, I was stressing out. I was like, I don't know what's happening. And I go back and I'm in line. And I'm like, I, I pray to the universe, don't send me back to this lady because she's giving me attitude and I don't understand. And another lady kind of waved me to her and she looked like she was a part of the LGBT community as well. And she was really sweet. I was like, look, the lady, I, I was here, the lady sent me back, my flight, I'm so stressed out, I don't know what to do, like, please, please don't yell at me, like, the computer didn't work, I came, I came and I was like, look, the computer didn't work, like, please don't yell at me, I did everything I could, I don't know why why my bag is overweight and she was like girl don't even worry about it and that's what i love about my people the other lady was you know my people too but she was an older my people but that's what i love about my people because sometimes they just like girl chill out you good you are good and so i put my bag up on the weigh machine she's printing out my paper my bag is now 47 pounds 47 pounds okay like i said i only took like three deodorants out of my bag i took three deodorants out of my bag i was like i only took like <laughs> like i'm processing this what i said i was like i only took three deodorants out of my bag like how is this how is it like how is it 47 pounds like that don't make no sense and i'm telling the lady and she's just like and I didn't process that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put these damn deodorants back in this bag. So I put my deodorants back in the bag. It's still under 50 pounds. It was 49.5. It was not overweight. The bag was not overweight. And that's when I, like, I processed that the, when the lady told me my bag was overweight, she, was ha she had her hand on my bag. So she purposely made my bag overweight. I don't, I don't, like, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense for me, to me, that someone would do that to a complete stranger. But why else would my bag be the perfect weight size if, when I went to someone else? Like, that lady was already giving me attitude from the line she was giving me attitude to my face. She was giving me attitude as I walked away and wasn't even working with her. What was going on? And I, that's why I say that it was like homophobia. Honestly, it was homophobia. Like, I can't. I can't. It, it Like, I know that I've traveled around the United States, been to California, and like I'm wearing my rainbows clothes and stuff like that, just chilling. And I've gotten dirty looks from people before, just wearing rainbow clothes. Not even like, hey, I'm gay. Just wearing rainbow clothes. People will hate on you for wearing rainbow clothes. It's so surprising to me. Because, like, rainbow is beautiful. Like, colors. You know, even if I wasn't on the LGBTQ committee, I'd still want to wear a rainbow. But people will give you the nastiest looks for rainbows. So, I, I it's, it's just, I don't know. That was just crazy for me. Um, and then after that, like, you know, while I was still in line going to the next lady, I figured out that my plane was being delayed and I was like oh whew, good 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 goody 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 so I go through the security no big deal everything is going good I finally get to my gate again no big deal everything's going good and I tell myself you know what I want something to drink I want something to snack on it's still early in the morning I'm waiting until my next flight let me go find something to eat let me go find something to snack on so i go to a machine and the bitch stole my money it stole my money like it stole my money like i was so upset about it because like i was like i i'm not finna call these people up i'm getting on a plane to leave the country they just got my money now like that that really got me 
that really got me right here in the heart. So I'm leaving Atlanta going to San Francisco and I'm already like, yo, is this a sign that I shouldn't be on this plane right now? Like, it's like, universe, are these signs on my, um, flight to Atlanta to San Francisco I met some nice people chill people there was a girl that actually uh went to the country that I was going to she was like oh you're gonna be fine as a black person you know nobody really cares about like you having a bald head because a lot of women also have bald heads specifically monks but she was like yeah women have bald heads and you shouldn't have to worry about anything it's going to be fine everyone was really friendly okay miss it's going to be fine everyone was really friendly I could say like people are friendly but I, I have ran into a couple of less desirables and I'm gonna keep it like that until I talk about it on a different video because I'm trying to stay streamlined once I got to the San Francisco airport I hung out for a little while which it was perfect that my flight was delayed because that meant I had to spend less time at the San Francisco airport so because before I had to spend like 12 13 hours at that airport due to how my planes had to be ordered like last minute and everything um I got some Chinese food I chillaxed charged up my phone and I was good to go I didn't even have time to play Fortnite I in my head I had this plan like I'm gonna sit in a corner and play Fortnite you know I didn't have time to do any of that I was just sitting and just like processing i was like i'm really going overseas like i don't know i thought the universe was gonna break and like i was in a coma dream this entire time because i was just like this don't make no sense <laughs> i'm going overseas i'm leaving home <laughs> like it's not my first time doing it but still i was like oh um <laughs> but after that i got on my next plane my bags were okay not overweight didn't have to pay no fees and that was something that went like across the board any airport i went to i did not have to pay no fees even if i was overweight except my last airport like but all the other airports they were just like girl you good girl you good that's that's good custom server right there girl you good you don't worry about nothing you good like yes queen um <laughs> but i got on my uh plane in sf and was going to another place now this other place i was going to i paid extra money to have like more foot room the thing is i wasn't going to have my more foot room because my more foot room came with me sitting by the window in an emergency aisle and the problem with that is i'm a little too wide up top for the emergency aisle and also i can't see underneath my wideness to buckle myself so i needed an extra buckle to, for me to comfortably be able to buckle and unbuckle myself in such a tight space now you can't sit in an emergency aisle you can't you can't sit in an emergency aisle within a stendo belt and so my plans of having that extra foot room went poof up in the skies now they had to move me because i needed an extendo belt and they moved me to another area I, I had an aisle seat which was great because a lot of the planes that i was in they put me in the middle seat the company when they were paying for my tickets always put me in a middle seat i'm like y'all are dirty for that but okay so they put me on the aisle the only problem with that is i had to break up a family i felt so bad about it i honestly i still feel a little bad about it i had to break up a family but it's okay because the guy that was sitting next to me randomly disappeared it was perfect he just randomly disappeared and then it was like me empty space empty space a woman and so like i had a lot more space then it was perfect now because i had to move seats 
I wasn't able to change where my bags were placed. So my bags were still in the back. And so I was just kind of like, when everybody was getting off the plane, I was just sitting around because I knew I had to go all the way back to grab my bags to come back to the front. While I'm waiting, everybody is just kind of like, avoiding like a certain area but it was like a lot of people and I didn't necessarily realize what was happening um finally everybody's off and I go to the back because I was probably like 10 seats away from where my stuff was I go to the back and I notice that people are standing around and I'm just like hey I need to get my bag and people move out the way they part like the Red Sea and there is a huge pile of Vermont <laughs> all over the sea all over the floor like in there's this parent and he's chastising his child public humiliation humiliation somebody help me say that down below public humiliation humiliation public humiliation to this little kid because he's like why didn't you hold it and the little kid is like i tried i just when we landed i couldn't hold it anymore and like i felt so bad for this kid because his pops is like oh i can't believe you and like he was so upset with this kid because his kid got sick but honestly if your kid got sick i don't think he purposely wanted to throw up all over the place that was embarrassing and like it was like that had a natural consequence he threw up all over the place he's not just gonna throw up all over the place and be like hey, hey, someone else has to clean that up you know what i mean so i felt so bad for this kid and I still didn't realize that my bag was like right <laughs> in, the, in the top part, <laughs> right above his phone. So there was no way for me to get my bag. I was the last person on the plane. <laughs> my bag was right there. <laughs> and at that point, I was like, yo, is the universe really telling me that I shouldn't be going on this trip? <laughs> Where did the vomit come from? Oh, I was really like, I was like, oh gosh. And like, people are just kind of like, oh, why are you just standing there? And I'm like, <laughs> my back. So like one of the ladies had to like climb over other seats and they were standing in the seats to give me my bags. <laughs> but yeah, the universe, it, it was, uh, well, it's not funny because that little boy was sick. But it was just like, in my head, I was like horrified. <laughs> like, I wasn't, I was like, I wasn't mad at the little boy or anything. I was like, oh, he's sick. But in my head, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Should I just, should I just go back home right now? Like, I had already, I, should I just turn around? We're gonna go buy a ticket and just go back. I don't have the money for this. <laughs> but um, I persisted, got my bags, and now I'm in the first place like the first place, the hotel, I'm going to the hotel, the airport that I went to in um, the redacted place, like the first place I went to, place number one, <laughs> um, they had a system in which like the taxis could not rip you off. Like you tell them where you're going, they will print out a ticket that tells you about how much it should cost. And they say, if it costs more than this, if it costs more than this, call 911. Well, it's not 911, but like pretty much call 911. If it costs more than this, call 911. Make sure you have the ticket. Okay, we will deal with it. Okay. And also someone told me that they had to deal with the police. They had to deal with the popos because it, he, he like he said he came and the taxi driver, he didn't have enough money and the taxi driver wanted him to buy a 10 pack of cigarettes that was way over how much he would have paid for the taxi the police got called he was black <laughs> the police got called it was a whole issue so i was like dang i'm really happy that i had a little bit of money before i got there and stuff like that so i was in place number one i met another girl that was with the same company it's really sweet i'm gonna call her s S and me got on a airport bus. We were running super late. We got on an airport bus to the airport. We got there super late. We're doing our COVID testing because at this point you still need the COVID test before every flight. And I meet another girl, another girl where we're going to call her B. So S and B. Now B 
is having some issues. Now, we wanted to go eat at McDonald's, okay? Let me tell you, McDonald's overseas. Fuck McDonald's in the States. McDonald's overseas is always better. Y'all, have y'all had McDonald's chicken wings? Have y'all had McDonald's chicken wings? I don't think you have. And let me tell you, buy a plane ticket and go to an Asian country and try some McDonald's chicken wings. It's worth it. It is worth it. Like, if you go overseas, I know people always say don't go to places that you've already been, but if you go overseas, go to McDonald's just to check it out, just to get a feel for the McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you will be pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly surprised. Now, McDonald's isn't something I'm going to go to too often. It's a little expensive over here. However, if I need a little chicken, a little chicken fix, <laughs> you know where your girl's going to go. Um, so, anyway, we try to go to McDonald's. And the thing with the area that we are in is you need, like, a little skinny QR code -y. A little skinny QR code to be accepted into the buildings. Now, the friend was not being allowed to dine in at Mickey D's. And the reason was that her code was not green. So we're looking through her phone, trying to figure out why her code isn't green. I figured that it was because she put in the vaccine wrong. Like, so, you know how there's different types of vaccines for COVID? Um, she put in, like, the Pfizer one. And then, you know, there's, like, the, the booster. So she just put in the booster twice instead of, like, oh, she took the Pfizer and then the booster, right? And so that was just messing up with the computer. The computer was like, I cannot compute. And so they were just having issues. And the thing is, the problem with that is it didn't really give too much details unless you read through all of the words and noticed that it said, like, um, it didn't even say booster. It said something like, uh, Omicron, Om Omicron, Om 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 Omicron. So anyway, <laughs> so you wouldn't have really known unless you were like p paying close attention to that. And I just, when I was doing my paperwork, I was like, oh, I guess, you know, so I even was having a hard time with that. Um, and so we order our food, we're standing out, we're eating, the girl is at the airport early because I think she needed S to take some bags with her to, uh, I know how to bleep it, I will bleep it, I will, it will be bleeped, it will be bleeped, y'all do not know what I just said, so anyway, um, we're meeting up, everyone's nice, everyone's really sweet, and the next thing that we have to do is get on our planes. Now, here's a problem. There's an app that I can't use because I can't download the app. I can't get the app to work. But I need the app to do my paperwork to go into the next country. So now, like, the ladies in the front are trying to help me download the app and trying to verify me, and it just was not working. I had to actually use... Um, I had to use B, yeah, I had to use B's phone and use her app and, like, sign in for myself on her phone and, like, send me the QR code so I can take the QR code around with me later on, which it was getting a little late because we were supposed to be getting on our plane. Let me tell you, going through security in other countries is like, it, it's always been better than it has been in the States. I That's just something that you should just, like, even though you should still arrive, like, two hours, three hours before your flight, do you really need to when it comes to other countries? Do you really need to? Like, they, they, they get you in. They get you in. And I guess because also these other countries don't allow people to have guns. So it's like, what are, you, what are we looking for? <laughs> it's like, you know, we already know y'all don't have a gun. But this is just formality. You know what I'm saying? So you get in. It's very fast. Honestly, even though I have worried, you never really have to worry when you are overseas with airports because they're, they're just like, okay, let's go. Now, 
we get on the plane and there's someone sitting in our seat we weren't supposed to be sitting next to each other but there was someone sitting in one of our seats and so we end up sitting next to each other and i watched the movie cruella de vil cruella de vil it was like when she was a little young girl i didn't get to finish that movie but let me tell you so far a plus i love a good villain or or origin origin story <laughs> It was a really good movie. I would say go ahead and watch that. After, like, damn, this is really long. But after I watched the movie, we get to our place, and now we're in a quarantine. We're in quarantine now. Like, that's that was amazing. Quarantine, two weeks, super long. Like, I didn't know what to do. I ended up breaking the thermometer, and no <laughs> no 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 my last day in quarantine i'm going to the airport again because i'm trying to focus this on airports going to the airport again my whole my people not even my hotel my people with the company ordered me like a taxi the problem is the taxi isn't in front of me and I don't know where the taxi is supposed to be. Supposedly I was in like a resort. So there was a gate in the front that nobody really knew about. And when I asked about where my taxi would be, the people told me to just wait right there. No, I had to walk all the way up to the front. So I'm getting calls and they're like, Aaliyah, where are you? The taxi driver is about to leave you. Where are you? Where are you? And I'm like, I don't see him. Is he at the right place? Like, I'm confused. I am Confucius right now. And I finally, like, go to the security guard. Everybody's so confused. And I'm looking around. And I saw somebody walk towards the front. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to follow that person. Because they look like they know what they're doing. I walk to the front, and while I'm walking, the, the other security guards are trying to stop me. They're like, where are you going? And I was just like, let me just, let me just keep walking and pretend they're not talking to me because I don't speak the language anyway. So I just kept walking. <laughs> and they're like, yo, what's going on? People are following behind me. Like, where's she going? <laughs> like, you can tell by body language. Like, where the hell is she going? Who, what is she doing? And uh, I just kept walking and kept walking. And then I got to the front and they're talking and they're like, yo, this taxi is for her. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. So she's supposed to leave. I guess they might have thought that I was just someone who just walked out the hotel or something like that. They were like, look, we got one on a loose. <laughs> she's escaping um but yeah like they're like yo this taxi for her the problem is they had just deleted like they, they just canceled the ride so the dude is trying to call them back and like he's like you got their number and i'm like shit no i don't have their number so we're trying to call them back people aren't answering finally he gets in contact with them he's like i'm here she's like okay i'll see you the money please take her to the airport and bada boom bada bang i am at the airport Whew. So now I'm leaving the um, quarantine city and I'm going to a bigger city to do some more paperwork, visa paperwork before I go to my final city, okay? My final destination! Um, I'm in my final destination right now. This is me from the future. Hi. <laughs> Not in, my, um, not in my final destination apartment. I'm still in the hotel right now. But once I, you know, move into my apartment, like, oh my goodness, that was, that was a handful. Getting the apartment, that is a handful. But anyway, once I move into my apartment, I'll let you guys know and show you guys around. Um, where the hell was I? <laughs> it's already 33 minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Where was I? Okay, so I get... From the quarantine to the new place. At the new place, I want to say the, the airport was pretty chill. No big issues. I did go overweight by a pound, but they were like, you good, you good. And I felt like I was good, you know? I felt comforted. Everybody kept saying, like, I did not have to pay any over fees until, like, the very end of my trip again I said that earlier but that's something that was amazing to me because after a while I stopped trying to make sure that my bag was a certain weight I just threw everything in there because I was tired of carrying it 
<laughs> I'm so honest. I was so tired of carrying. I was like, I will pay this fee. Like, I'm so tired of carrying all of this shit. So we're at the airport at the new place. Everything is okay, except they sent me to the domestic side. The problem is I don't have money for the new country that I'm in. When I got to my other place, I transferred money, but I can't use that money here. I can't use it. And if you're in a domestic area, they don't have money exchange. And also, like, it's no way to just kind of walk through and get to the international area. Everything is closed down. There's no signs, all because of coronavirus. So, like, at this point, I'm like, okay, I don't have any money. And someone told me, like, you shouldn't have to worry about, like, not having money because the other money that I had is more, um, more, it's worth more than the money for the country that I was in. So I was like, he was like, they will just accept this. No, the hell they won't. They won't accept it, okay? They did not accept my money. My money was no good there. Except they accepted my U.S. money. They, they accepted my U.S. money, okay? So we were trying to like, okay, so it's such a weird thing. I think at airports, there's usually like these poacher dudes that are working with the taxi drivers that aren't allowed to be in the front because I don't think they're necessarily taxi taxi drivers or something like that. But anyway, they're, they're sitting in like a um, carport. And what happens is I came out, I tested for COVID because you got to test for COVID everywhere. I tested for COVID and I'm looking around because I thought that my hotel, like my people, my company would give me like some more guidance. No, they're like, you're on your own. I didn't find out what hotel I was going to until I was in the country. Like, again, I didn't find out what hotel I was going to until I was there. And already took my COVID test. And I was like, where am I going? Like, I'm here. Like, no one ever sent me any information. They're like, oh, yeah, you're going here. All right. All righty then. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going here. This guy, he he's like, oh, you need a taxi? Follow me. He takes me. We walk for a mile. Not even going to... We walked for a mile all the way. Like, there were taxis right there. He was a poacher. Walked for a mile all the way around till we got to this area. This man was like, we're trying to figure out how to pay. I don't have the money. I'm stressing out. There's these two men. The man asked me to take a picture with him. So I took a picture. I should have got a discount. I should have got a discount for, like, letting him take a picture with me. That's what I should have did. The man gave him a price, and then the other man, he told him the price, and he said it out loud, and then the other man tried to charge me more. Like, it, like it was literally happening in front of my face. So the guy gave me a price. The other man was like, oh, yeah, it's this amount. And then the guy didn't hear him say that, so he went up to the front. And when he came back, he was like, yeah, it's going to be this amount. And so I was able to give him, like, the money for that amount. And the other guy was like, dang. He wanted to get an extra $10 out of me. It was really sus. It, it was really sus. I suggest that if you are at an airport, don't follow random strangers. <laughs> I know. I was, in my head, I was like, is this how I'm going to get trafficked? Like, I really was thinking that. I was like, damn. Like, it was such a weird experience because the taxi driver was, like, smoking in front of me. And, like, they were talking. They had a whole conversation. I'm standing around for 20 minutes before the taxi driver even decided to take me to my location. But I got to my location nice and safe safe again don't get into random taxis don't 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 follow random men at airports i don't know why i did it i just did it okay and I, i'm still alive to tell the tale or maybe i'm dead maybe maybe i'm somewhere in a coma and this is all my imagination if this is all my imagination i'm gonna be rich pretty soon <laughs> if the world was created for my i'm gonna make a lot of money I'm going to have, like, a lot of people who love me, and I'm going to be safe and protected for the rest of my life. So, 
I don't know. Everything always works out for me. <laughs> so I'm at that hotel. There's more videos from me being at that hotel that are going to come up on my channel if they aren't up already. And once I left that area, I left that area with a new guy. So this new guy, honestly, let me tell you, a lot of men who come to where I am already have a girlfriend where I am. It's very interesting. But I leave the hotel with that guy and now we're going to our main city. So this is like the last time I am on a plane. Like, oh, I'm so happy. I was, just, I was getting to the end of my story time. It's like 40 minutes. I don't know if I'll edit, I'll be able to edit this down or not. But I'm so happy. This is the last time I'm getting on a freaking plane. I don't want to see another plane again this year. But we get there. We're getting there late. We took the subway to the place. We're getting there late. But everything's still working out. Like, like the person that I went with this time, he's white. And like it's kind of like the seas just kind of part for us. I felt like royalty. Like it's just like the people that you walk around with in a different country really sets the tone with how people treat you. Okay. So, <laughs> and it's sad to say, but also like yeah. <laughs> and he was also a good conversation partner. Like I wasn't bored. I felt very comfortable. Everything was working out for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, we get to the airport and we do have to pay some over fees, but it's not that much. It's really not that much. If I can remember, I will put the price up here, but I don't think that it was like more than $50. If that, like realistically, I think it was like 20 bucks. Realistically, I think it was just 20 bucks. But if I figure it out, mm, I might put it up here or something. This is a 40 minute vlog. 40 minutes story time you know what I'm saying so maybe I mean I did go to okay I did go to like five different airports so like maybe 10 minutes each story time 10 so minutes each story time it makes sense it makes sense okay if you squint your eyes you know if you it makes sense um once I arrive from that place like from that airport to the final destination got in a taxi my taxi didn't overcharge me by the way i know someone who got overcharged he got he had to pay like a hundred mm, i can't say a hundred if i know the u.s amount i'll put it on the board but i say maybe mm, maybe i paid like Ten, fifteen dollars to get to my hotel. This guy paid like ten, fifteen. He paid like fifteen, thirty, forty-five. He paid like forty-five bucks to get to his hotel. So he was ripped off because we all went to the same hotels. So he definitely got ripped off. I was worried that they would try to rip me off. That's why I asked the other guy that was going to the hotel too. I was like, let me know how much they charge you. And he was like, of course they're not going to rip us off. They ripped that other guy off. So it, it really depends on who you meet. Like not every taxi driver is bad, but every once in a while you get one that will try to rip the foreigner off. I guess you get one that will try to rip anyone off anything for a quick buck like you gotta know how to deal with them and so i keep meeting honest people and i hope to god the universe that i keep meeting honest people and people who are kind because you know you need a little kindness in this world that is it for my story time about the airports that i went through i went through um the atlanta airport i went to the san francisco airport I went through the um, first Asian country airport. <laughs> I went through, uh, what is this? The, the quarantine, oh, the quarantine airport. I went through the 
main city airport and then I went through my current city airport. So I went through five different places and I have to say that each of them came with their own challenges. Each of them came with their own benefits. Uh, I, you know, the beginning of the, the trip seemed like, okay, everything was saying go back. But now I've kind of gotten more comfortable with where I am. And I'm thinking about like, even like, this is a thought that I had before, but when I first got here, I was like, could I raise a family? Could I raise a family here? That's a thought that's been going through my head. And I brought it up with Stu and, you know, I don't think he's too opposed to it. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll have a little family over here. And like, I'll take you guys along for that journey. Um, much love and positive vibes and i hope to see you guys again next time i have to go meet up with some people um so i'm gonna have to cut this long because <laughs> it's not short at all it is it's not short at all 45 minutes maybe i can edit it down to like 40 minutes <laughs> So anyway, bye. See you guys next time.